So here's our first example for our constant acceleration problems. So example number one says a certain elevator cab has a total run of 190 meters and a maximum speed of 305 meters per minute. And it accelerates from rest and then back to rest at 1.22 meters per second squared. We want to know A, how far does the cab move while accelerating to full speed from rest, and B, how long does it take to make the non-stop 190 meter run starting and ending at rest. So pause this video for a second and try to do this yourself. All right, so let's try it. Um, first and foremost, I want to kind of highlight my givens. I'm going to write down my givens, and I'm going to draw a little picture, just like I taught you guys, right? Um, so we have a total run of 190 meters. Um, what they mean by run is how far it goes, right? So that's going to end up being our displacement. In this case, I'm going to call it delta x, but you could call it delta y, because we know elevators go up, whatever you want to do. Um, it has a maximum speed of 305 meters per minute, and it accelerates from rest and then back to rest at 1.22 meters per second squared. Now, the trick here, and let me change my color so I can do a little drawing, um, is we don't really know, we know the total run is 190 meters, right? But we don't know how far it goes when it's speeding up or how far it goes when it's slowing down. So we don't know this this maximum speed. We don't know if they, it, slow, it speeds up to the maximum speed and then immediately slows down. It might go at a constant speed in there somewhere, which it probably does. If you think about when you get into an elevator, right, it'll speed up, go at a constant speed, and then slow down. And those accelerations are actually what make you feel either heavy or light when you're in an elevator. We'll talk about that later, though. <laughs> so first and foremost, here is our run of the elevator. We know that that is 190 meters. Um, we also know, like I said, that it's going to speed up here, and then it's going to go at that that maximum speed at a constant speed of 305 meters per minute, and then it's going to slow down. So I'm going to say number one, two, and three here. So this is um, speed up, this is slow down, and this is a constant 305 meters per minute, not second. I want to put second because, of course, that's what we want in physics, right? And if you can look at these units right here, we know that the total run is 190 meters. The acceleration is meters per second squared. And then the velocity is in a weird unit. It's in meters per minute. So we are going to have to convert this, all right? And we'll do that in a second. So we have three different motions here. Now, remember, when I told you about acceleration problems and those constant acceleration equations, you can only use them when you have a constant acceleration. So we have to split this problem up into three parts, OK? Now, we have a constant acceleration for part number one. We have a constant acceleration for part number two. It's zero because it's going at a constant velocity. And then the constant acceleration for part number three because it's slowing down at a constant acceleration. It's not constant the whole time, but it's constant in those three different parts. So that's why we split it up, OK? Now, because we're going to split it up, I'm going to put a lot of subscripts down. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So for my givens, all right, first and foremost, I know that the total run is 190 meters. So I'm going to say delta x total is equal to 190 meters. And then it says the maximum speed is 305 meters per minute. Now, again, we don't want that in meters per minute, so we need to change it. Now, I'm going to say v max, which is v2, right? That's what it's going in that second part right there. Um, is that 305 meters per minute. And we want to convert that so we know in one minute there are 60 seconds. So that ends up being uh, 5.08 meters per second. Okay, so that's our maximum velocity, which is also our velocity during that constant velocity and um, move, moving motion, <laughs> number two. <laughs> now. Another couple of things about that velocity that we just found is it's going to be the final velocity for motion number one, and it will be the initial velocity for motion number two. Sorry, number three, motion number three. So the final for motion number one is that 
meters per second. And then the initial for motion number three is 5.08 meters per second, All right? Now, we know those are the final velocities, sorry, the final velocity for one is 5.08 meters per second. What's the initial velocity? Well, it starts from rest, right? So that means the initial velocity for motion number one is zero. And then we know that for motion number three, we slow down to rest. So that means the final velocity for motion number three is also going to be zero. Now let's talk about acceleration. Now we know that it accelerates from rest and back to rest at 1.22 meters per second squared. Now that's the magnitude of the acceleration, right? So we have to also put the direction of acceleration and we use our positives and negatives for that. So since during motion number one, we set our velocities positive and we're speeding up, that means acceleration is also going to be positive. So acceleration for one is a positive 1.22 meters per second squared. Now acceleration for motion number three, again, we're going upwards and we said that velocity is positive, but we're slowing down. So that means that the acceleration for motion number three has to be negative. So acceleration for motion number three equals a negative 1.22 meters per second squared. Sorry, my writing got a little cramped in there. Now we have all of our givens down, okay? We want to know now, A, how far does the cab move while accelerating to full speed from rest? So when we're accelerating to full speed from rest, that's only motion number one because we start at rest and then we accelerate to full speed during that motion. So for, I'm going to do this in a different color, for part A, all we want to know is that displacement for motion number one because it says how far. So we have delta x1 equals question mark. Now we're looking for the displacement for number one. We also know that our final velocity for number one is 5.08, our initial velocity is zero, and our acceleration for number one is 1.22 meters per second squared. Now, because we have all those givens, what equation are we gonna use? I'm pausing so you like look at your equations and you, you know, yeah. <laughs> so the equation that we wanna use with all those givens in them is final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times delta x, okay? Now, remember, I want you to solve this equation algebraically for the actual thing that we're solving for first. So that means we wanna solve it for delta x. So I'm gonna subtract the initial squared from both sides. So we get v final squared minus v initial squared. And then I'm also going to divide both sides by 2a to get that delta x by itself. So divided by 2a. And now we can plug in our numbers. So final velocity was 5.08 meters per second, and that's squared, minus initial velocity for one, which was zero, and then divide that by two times A, which is 1.22 meters per second squared. So we end up getting that the displacement for motion number one, let's see, 5.08 squared divided by two times 1.22. 10.576, so about 10.6 meters. Now a little note about units. Um, I wanna show you how they work out, okay? So remember, we are squaring this right here, which means that meters become squared and seconds become squared. We have seconds squared on the denominator down here, so that's gonna cancel out with this second squared, and then this meters down on the denominator is going to cancel out with that squared right there, which is why I end up with meters for that displacement. So it makes sense. All right, so that's letter A. Now we're going to move on to letter B. Now B says, how long does it take to make the nonstop 190 meter run starting and ending at rest? So this is the total run, right? And we're looking for how long. So when we ask how long, we're looking for time. Okay, so we're looking for total time. So B time, oh, what am I, what am I writing? Time total equals question mark. Now we know, again, we have three different motions here. So that means that our time total is going to be equal to the time for motion number one plus the time for motion number two plus the time for motion number three. Notice how 
when I do this, I like to put a little uh, tail on my T because it looks a lot like a plus sign. Okay, so you gotta be really careful with all your variables in physics. So we wanna know our three different times first. So let's split it up. What I like to do when I have problems like this that have different motions like this, I like to kind of make columns almost like this. So I can split it up and I can find all three of those times, okay? Now, number one's gonna be easy because we already know most of that information, okay? Um, so we know the displacement, we know the final velocity for motion number one, we know the initial velocity for motion number one, and we know the acceleration for motion number one. So we just need one of the equations that has time in it. I'm partial to the first basic just because it's basic and it's easy. So we have final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Solving for time here, I'm gonna subtract initial velocity from both sides and divide by acceleration. So we get time is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by acceleration. Now plugging in my numbers, I get time for one is equal to final velocity for motion number one, which is at 5.08 meters per second, minus initial velocity for motion number one, which is just zero. And then we're gonna divide that by acceleration, which is 1.22, a positive 1.22 meters per second squared. So we end up getting that the time for motion number one is equal to 5.08 divided by 1.22, 4.16. Four. So we'll just say 4.16 seconds. All right, so that's our first time. Um, now, our second time, um, we, let's, let's do third time first, and then we'll go back to second time, okay? So third time, we have to think about this um, just in terms of the motion, right? Now, we know that in motion number one, we start from an initial velocity of zero, we speed up to that final velocity of 5.08 meters per second. And then for motion number three, we start at that 5.08 meters per second, and then we slow down to zero, right? A velocity of zero. Now for motion number one, we have a positive acceleration of 1.22 meters per second squared. For motion number three, we have a negative 1.22 meters per second squared. I think you know where I'm going with this. I'm just trying to prove that they're kind of mirror images of each other, right? So it's gonna take the same amount of time for motion number three as it did for motion number one. Now I can also prove it to you. So if we use that first basic equation, final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Again, solving for time, when we plug in our numbers here, final velocity is zero for motion number three, minus initial velocity, which is that 5.08 meters per second, divided by the acceleration, which is a negative 1.22 meters per second squared. So do you see how it's the same thing, but we're dividing a negative by a negative, so we end up getting a positive 4.16 seconds, okay? Now, this part's a little harder to find the time for motion number two. We know that motion number two has a constant velocity of that, what was it, 5.08 meters per second, right? Now we know that since it's a constant velocity, we can only use one equation for this, the constant velocity equation, which is our displacement over time. Now remember, this is velocity number two, because we're in motion number two, so that's gonna be the displacement for motion number two over time for motion number two. Now we know this velocity right here. We want to know this time, but we don't know this displacement yet. Okay, we don't know the displacement yet. But we know that the total displacement, oops, let's just erase that. We know the total displacement, is equal to 190 meters. And we also know that the total displacement will be the sum of all the displacements, right? So because of that, we can find the displacement for motion number two. We already know the displacement for motion number one. We already found it for part A. And then we also know that motion number one and motion number three are like mirror images of one another. So you'll have the same displacement for motion number three, okay? So displacement, for motion number two will be equal to the total displacement minus 
the displacement from motion number one minus the displacement from motion number three. So plugging in numbers here, we get displacement from motion number two is equal to 190 meters minus 10.6 meters minus 10.6 meters. So we end up getting 190 minus the quantity two times 10.6 we get delta x2 equals 168.8 meters. And now we can finally solve for the time for motion number two. So we know that the constant velocity is equal to our displacement over time. That means time is equal to displacement over that velocity. So time for motion number two will be the displacement 168.8 meters divided by the velocity for number two, which is 5.08 meters per second. If I divide this by 5.08, I end up getting the time for two is equal to 33.23. Yes. All right, so finally, my answer, the total time is gonna be the sum of all these times, okay? So I end up getting the time for number one, which was 4.16 seconds, plus the time for number two, which is 33.23 seconds, plus the time for number uh, three, which was 4.16 seconds again. So I'm just gonna add plus 4.16 times two, the quantity of course. And so I end up getting that our total time is equal to 41.55-ish. And that is our answer.